Okay, uh, good morning and welcome everyone. We've been learning about uh, the steps of deliverance, so we'll complete that today. Uh, let's pray and get into the class. I would like to request Rin, can you lead us in prayer, please? For this uh, day, Lord, and um, and Lord, as we uh, come together to study, to learn um, uh, about your word, and Lord, I pray that um, you open our hearts and our minds and that we will be able to understand what is being taught. And thank you, Jesus, that you are here with us and that you'll help us. In your name I pray, amen. 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 So thank you, even those who have connected online uh, for connecting. In the last class, we saw the Pablo Botari 10-step model for deliverance. We were able to go on till about um, point 0.7, I think, 7 or 8. Yeah, we, sorry, 7. Yeah, till point 0.7. So we will... Uh, look at the other points today and see if we can also kind of complete the, the rest of our portions. Essentially, in the 10 steps, what we have understood is to, first of all, bring the spirit under subjection. Then you um, ensure that the person accepts Christ. Okay, And then identify the source of the problem. Then you deal with that open door. You close that open door. Then you rebuke the spirit, right? So when we rebuke the spirit, what happens? Or we, we try to cast out that spirit. Once we have dealt with the demonic powers, it becomes very easy for us to actually uh, cast the spirit out. So in 7, we were talking about repentance, if there is unforgiveness, renouncing. Remember those terms? Renouncing. When we renounce, we have to speak aloud because pacts with Satan that have been made must be broken through verbal um, uh, affirmations that I no longer belong to you, uh, I belong to Jesus and all that. That needs to be spoken. So then we pray with the person concerned and we help that person to actually break those, those pacts. And uh, that way the doors will be closed uh, and then the unclean spirits will not be able to enter right they they are actually when the pact is broken legally they don't have a place to stay in so they actually they should just come out also like even if you don't command once the person has made that commitment it is possible that they already feel free but then we will still continue to command and ask that spirit to come out. And once the person is free, what we can do is we can encourage them in thanksgiving, in praise to God. So we, we may pray with them and say, okay, let's thank God. Uh, Jesus has set you free. Um, you, uh, you can walk in freedom now. So now that they're experiencing that new sense of freedom, they'll also feel joy. So pray together with them sing together with them, praise together with them. Uh, and in this way, we, we kind of uh, encourage them. And the important thing is to also lead them in the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And I explained the reason last time. Because those demon spirits, like Matthew chapter 2, they'll go out, they'll come back stronger with seven stronger spirits. So it is better that the person is filled with the word of God and with the Holy Spirit. So you pray with them and ask for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So now with this, we have completed our 10 steps. And what has happened? We closed the doors. The demons came out. But now is a very, very important and crucial step in deliverance ministry. That is post-ministry care. Okay, post-ministry care. So in deliverance, in all other ministries which we do, suppose we don't get a chance. I mean, in every ministry, there should be something we do to help the person. 
isn't it? For example, if people get saved, then even then we will try to see, can they be a part of a church? Can they be with a good pastor? Can they grow in the Lord? We need to take up certain steps so that in the long run, the believer continues in the Lord. In the same way, for deliverance, once the demon spirit has come out, post-ministry, how to make sure that this person will remain strong? Because in this scenario, um, we already know from scripture that Satan is going to try again. Okay, He will try again to come into the same space. So we know that. That believer may not know. And what does the Bible say? His, uh, his final condition will be worse than the previous condition. So there are all these dangers and we cannot ignore that. So in the deliverance ministry, post-ministry care is very, very crucial. You can't just leave the people. Understood? So post-ministry care, we, first of all, they are now born again. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, we connect them to a leader. Okay? And we encourage them. Make sure you read your Bible every day. Make sure you pray every day. Go to church. Be a part of a good fellowship. Learn the word of God. All that we'll do. In addition to this, we must tell them about the importance of forgiveness as a lifestyle. Because in many cases we see when a person is walking in unforgiveness, bitterness, that, that becomes an open door for the devil. So we must encourage them that, okay, you know, uh, as you're living your life, many things will happen, but make sure that you deal rightly in the relationships, forgive the others, release forgiveness fast. So why is it even more important in this case? Because if they don't do that, there are open doors for the enemy to come. So we can... Uh, help them to follow a lifestyle in which they forgive people. Okay, that is one thing which we can guide them in. Um, and if they are struggling with it, some more counseling can be helpful or some scriptures. We take them through scriptures, how uh, the word of God tells us to resolve, right? If you come before God to worship and you have something against another brother, you go settle it and you come. So how to settle it? All those things, we can just guide them. And we can also help them. Why are they in that state of unforgiveness? Uh, are there any past issues? So then do they need to go through uh, some kind of therapy for that? Or what is it? Just help them. Ensure that they are in a better place, right? It, emotionally. Uh, now, what else can we do? We can encourage them, keeping in line with forgiveness, to deal with the hurts. We all get hurt. But deal with the hurts quickly because sometimes the tendency can be to hold on to the hurt and holding on to the hurt will again open the door for the enemy so deal quickly with the hurts that we may experience um, and one helpful thing can be accountability accountability simply means having some people in your life with whom you can open up you can share and you can also keep them informed, like, how are you doing? So, for example, let's say I have been delivered okay, from some spirit of bitterness and strife and all that. Now, I am finding it difficult to um, have a forgiving heart towards people. And I don't deal very well with hurts. So, after all the counseling and all the instructions for worship, if let's say I am connected to one or two leaders, I trust them, then what I can do is I can be accountable to them. Every time I'm struggling with unforgiveness, I can go speak to them and say, hey, guide me, help me. So accountability also is helpful. You just connect them to somebody to whom they can speak, share, um, and you know, feel free through this relationship. So accountability can be created. Then personal devotion, where in their everyday life, they have habits like, I already said, reading the Bible, praying, worshipping, 
now giving we can also encourage them to serve right like whatever little bit you know and god is calling you to do do be active be very active in god and in the ministry you can do that so little by little as they are doing these things they'll feel that they are growing in god and there's less opportunity for the work of the enemy in their lives and now that they are filled with the holy spirit we can also encourage them to pray in tongues uh, because praying in tongues it fills you further with the holy spirit okay so all this will be very helpful to keep a person free for a long for their entire lifetime so this is how one would deal with uh, somebody who has been delivered yeah so these are the key things so anything about anything about uh, steps of deliverance questions that uh, you may have or any experiences that you can relate to and you're wondering about a couple of things I can speak into the mic. When we praying and demon is possessing, can we use other tongues? Can we use tongues? Can we use tongues? Okay, good question. So to worship God, when we are in the process of deliver, uh, you know, ministering deliverance to someone, we can pray in tongues. But when we are praying in tongues, we are praying as a personal prayer language, isn't it? So. Uh, and I already said that demons can't understand. So then how is it helpful? Because you cannot give instructions to the demon spirit in tongues. So that's the thing. Uh, as a prayer, you can pray. If you're getting a word with interpretation, as a message, you can release it, no problem. But for commanding the demon spirit, you need a language. You need you know, any, any language that we speak. Um, yeah. So if you're speaking to the demon in tongues, it won't be helpful. They can't understand what you're saying. So then how will you release your authority? When you're saying submit, you're clearly telling the devil, don't do this, do this, come out. Then they won't get confused. They have, And whenever you say something, they have to be subject to what you're saying. So use a human language. Uh, is a uh, manifestation happens uh, it will manifest no manifestation will also happen when we are uh, breaking some soul ties or curses yes. yes so it can happen it can happen anytime actually so one of the things that uh, i have read uh, and uh, i have also observed is when you're ministering to someone and you sense that there is like a demon spirit uh, associated with their problem, just just keep looking at them. Their facial expression changes. Even when you're breaking soul ties or something like that, not always, not always, but it could happen. Like facial expression changes or uh, the other day I, I was praying for uh, uh, one particular uh, girl and just when I started... Till I was talking, she was fine. But when I started praying, she just cannot sit still. You know, she's scratching her head and she's moving her head and her eyes are open, all looking all over the place while we are praying. I said, let's pray. So I could sense what is actually going on. Just observe. So manifestation can be all kinds, different kinds of manifestations. Uh, but you should alertly just observe what's going on. When you're praying and you're observing, you can make out. Because it will try to disturb you. Why should somebody do that when we all know while praying we close our eyes, we, okay, pray with me. But sometimes she was quiet and then just she just couldn't keep quiet. Then you understand that, oh, okay, why this weird behavior? Something also like when uh, people uh, confess, because mm. uh, I, have, I had an experience. Uh, one time we are a group of people, we are uh, worshipping. And uh, the pastor, uh, as we are worshiping, he, he he sensed, and he told like, uh, some in some of your family, uh, 
uh, this is what you have practiced uh, some kind of false prophecy witchcraft all these things against god in your family someone has pro uh, practiced and uh, you have to uh, and it was still there that operation of the spirit is still there you maybe you won't know it as he was telling that uh, that person he came and uh, he like confessed yes it's in my family the moment he uh, confessed like he fell down he got fits and uh, it, the okay. manifestation happened yeah can possible. it also happen in that it way? can happen it can happen see uh, it can happen but it may not happen also so that is also there sometimes we are waiting oh this person is going to manifest but nothing is visible so it should be open for both just keep observing uh, you may see some changes you may not see some changes but more i think in in whenever in deliverance no what is helpful is you pray and be more alert about what is the holy spirit saying like our sense what is going on in our spirit and then the confirmation to that from the things that are going on around us that is what you should give more importance to uh, because then you'll you'll know like what is going on like you may not have peace after you've prayed you feel the spirit is still there maybe there's no manifestation but within yourself you are aware so give more focus to the voice of the holy spirit in your ministry Um, Pastor, for this uh, post ministry suggestions, oh. um, I mean, my question is why is forgiveness the first thing? What if it's addiction or something else? Not can forgiveness. You, uh, uh, can you come again, Rin? In this uh, post ministry suggestions, mm. why is uh, forgiveness the first step? I mean, what if, yeah, why is forgiveness the thing for them to do? Like after they're ministered, not... See, it's a it's... common open door, Rin. For all of us, forgiveness, unforgiveness is a common open door. There can be many other open doors. Okay. Uh, but then forgive, unforgiveness tends to be the most basic, which demons can use. That's why we want them to be safe from that. That's the reason. Any other questions? Oh, there's one question here which Shivakumar has asked. He's saying, um, uh, will demons understand different languages? So apart from tongues, Shivakumar, they understand. They understand languages. Uh, so then we know that they understand all human languages, which is why when we command them, they have to respond because they understand what we are saying. Okay, so answer is yes, they understand different languages. And Nina, if we are dealing with a child who cannot speak and uh, so cannot deal with the list of all things mentioned, so we who are praying are doing all things on behalf of the child. So we keep praying for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Um, yes, Nina, if the child can't understand you, yeah, you just keep doing things with the Holy Spirit. But when it comes to breaking dedications and things like that, you can involve the parent. So child doesn't understand all this. But if you have the parent, obviously, I'm, I'm thinking because this child is so small or uh, still not mature enough to speak. So you break the dedication with the parent. That will help a lot if that is possible. I, I hope uh, your question is answered. Okay. Uh, Jackin says, for believer living in bondages for many years, is it okay to follow the post-ministry suggestions only sincerely because they have already accepted the Lord Jesus as their savior or we should follow the steps as in Pablo Botari? So in the case of a believer, because they are not demon-possessed, what are they? They are oppressed. 
believers are oppressed or they can be demonized so in the case of them being demonized if i uh, if i say you come out demon in the name of jesus it's okay because we know there are strongholds that have been occupied by demons but generally we find oppressed believers they are not demonized okay they are oppressed so in that case uh you're right uh, jacken you don't have to go through all the steps because they're already born again they may be already filled with the holy spirit uh but we may have to talk to them about uh, the open doors pray with them against the open doors and tell them if they continue in it can have forgiveness addictive habits whatever whatever things are giving access to the devil that they will never be free so talk to them pray with them and post ministry also tell them see now god has set you free but you need to continue in a godly lifestyle so you don't have to go strictly step by step by this model is that okay jackin okay sure that's done thank you uh, any anything else about deliverance how about group uh, groups of people believers when you're casting out a demon together how does that work okay so some simple instructions could be that you may be a group let's say five people have gone together and they are casting out some stubborn demon spirit one person can give the instructions okay one person among you you can decide tell that person to give the instructions all the others can pray in the spirit all the others can declare a scripture you know all the others can also give clues like you know the discerning of spirits hey i still sense that this is going on uh, or revelation god gives a prophetic word or a word of knowledge make him sit down give him a cup of water something so as a team everyone is serving but only one person is giving the command why why can't everybody give the command be quiet you you demon or come out in the name of jesus why only one person has to speak exactly the demon will get confused what should i do now one is saying sit down one is saying get up because they are subject to our authority they have to listen so if every believer is commanding this that you're stirring up the demon actually so it becomes it's not helpful best is one person take the lead all the others support that one person you decide among yourselves okay and then do it that way so in group ministry you can do that yeah okay so anand is saying when a, a demon is being cast out and there are people around is there a possibility that the demon can go into them yes there is a possibility if they have open doors in their lives so as a ministry team you can actually uh, you know you you can ask people to join you hopefully they also have faith that's why they're coming with you and they're fine right so as a team you're okay now for the family members or someone you can't tell them don't be there if they if you can tell them and they are not there fine but if they still want to be there you just pray over them we cover them with the blood of jesus lord we speak your protection on the people around you can just pray for them that's all yeah um and pastor can we use this uh so are these steps that we learned only for a person or can we use it over a place or a city or on a place yeah over like if a country or a place is city is demonized so okay. how, how can we also minister yeah so exercising uh, authority over territories we are coming to that next uh but in essence all this issuing of commands declarations all that works even for a space a region territory also yeah uh, 
Rin, can you pass the mic to Nina? Uh, so, Pastor, you're telling if in a group setting, when you're praying, um, this who the, uh, like Anand does that demon can go to another person. So this demon knows like the other person have an open door. They know like, they can understand it from out. They can understand he it. Will? This demon it Haan, knows if it goes that to the, the person with an open door. Uh, he that demon can understand that the, the okay the the other person is having an open door or he's yeah. A, see, they are actively looking for a space, so they will understand who has an open door, who doesn't. They 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 are more than happy. They'll be searching for a space. But all I'm saying is don't get worried about it because we are going in prayer. So we've covered the people in our prayer. So don't worry about it. So frankly, for them, distance also doesn't matter. No. If they are clo they are in the room or they are sitting in the next room, same thing. <laughs> they can go from here to there. But just pray over them and speak the covering of uh, the blood of Jesus over them. Anand, I couldn't hear you at all. <laughs> we are talking about loopholes. Yeah, we're talking about loopholes. Unbelievers. Yeah, unbelievers have many loopholes. That's true. Why won't they be demonized? Uh, easily. Yeah, they can be demonized. No, if it if it uh, goes and makes some place its home, obviously it will either whatever it will manifest or not manifest. But it's dwelling over there, isn't it? So uh, what Anand is saying is, anyway, unbelievers have loop. If they have loopholes, then it can easily affect them, right? So another thing which you can follow is you can just uh, while you have the opportunity to counsel this person, if possible, you can do it in a group setting also. You know what I mean about Jesus. You share about Jesus to everyone. You ask everyone to accept Christ, right? Uh, you ask everyone to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then you go ahead and cast out the demon from this person. So that also is a possibility. Yeah? Yes. Yes. It's easier for a demon to enter an unbeliever than a believer. Very correct. Because legally, they cannot into a believer. But if there are open doors, yes, they would. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the question is, is every unbeliever, because it's easy for demon spirits to access unbelievers, is every unbeliever possessed by demons? Answer is no. They can be oppressed. It depends. It depends on the unbeliever also. Now, if they are not um, having you know, all these open doors, habits, there are people who live very righteous also. Isn't it? So then they're not providing any open doors. But because they are not covered, uh, Satan can oppress them in many ways. Oppression can keep happening. Okay? Possession may not happen for some unbelievers. But yeah, it's easier for unbelievers to be oppressed, possessed compared to believers. Time. Yeah, why does it uh, sometimes take much time for us to cast out demons? Um, so as I shared earlier, that interview process, remember? See, I've not given any time for this Pablo Botari model. So in our minds, it's like, ha, huh, we have one hour, we'll do step one, step two, step three, and then we'll reach step 10. It may not be the case. Steps 1 to 10 may happen in two days' time, or it can happen over one week. You understand? So 
it depends on a lot of things and especially in the interview that that particular step what is the core issue why did this person get affected if we are not able to find out that also it will take long ha huh. hmm somewhere outside ha huh. So he he is some meeting and I am only in church and my brother is there. So one family came and uh, with his wife. So she is crippled. Her body is very crippled and she is not in conscious. And I prayed, and uh, his teeth is fully tight. I prayed after praying, normal. Hmm. She is. is speaking and we all think like it gone but yes, after sir. that same thing happen so that day uh, it's very difficult for pastor to come back at time so he came tomorrow full night they they were in church and we are in church and we are sleeping and sometimes he is telling like they are coming to take me and they are telling like she is saying many things and like that so i'm praying it going for like one hour rest after that same thing so till morning on morning pastor came he prayed and it gone and normal they went home till 3 days maybe this things happen and after 3 days uh, she is now fine this gone okay yeah so uh, it can take time vimal that's what i'm saying because sometimes we rebuke but the door is not closed then these demons come back they try to manifest in the same way so it it can be very frustrating but we have to keep persevering okay um we may have to counsel the person we may have to find out maybe they'll share few things but they won't share everything what is going on in their lives so according to you you found out what you should pray against but actually no there is something else unless holy spirit reveals we don't know what to address isn't it so so many things are there uh, so it may not be so straight forward praise god for times when it is one one step finished but there are times when it may take a couple of days a couple of weeks even what you can do is you can i've heard people say this um uh, they they pray over the person they try right all these steps they just try if it's not working Uh, they just bind the demon i bind you in the name of jesus you will not afflict this family anymore i uh, i speak protection over this family i speak protection over this child you just pray and you close the session then next day come start again you got it so they they use this thing of binding that demon and then restart again the next day because the demon is still there we are not done till it's out so that's how some people do it also ha hmm. huh. hmm. so see this also takes some practice uh, as i've been saying no listen to the holy spirit be sensitive to the holy spirit observe the circumstances we will get the peace that yes ha huh, it's all done it's fine then it's okay because we still have post ministry keep in touch tell the person i will meet you after two days let's meet again let's meet after one week so also when the demon leaves let's just take example depression one demon of depression it's not psychological but demon of depression you cast it out person looks settled happy peaceful after two days when you meet also they are peaceful after one week if you meet that means what demon is gone person has changed okay so this way one is the witness of the spirit second is through their life itself you will understand that demon is not working anymore it's gone so like slowly we'll understand what exactly is happening yeah that's how yeah person can be possessed by many demons true
<laughs> so if there are many demons, do they leave one by one? Uh, that legion demon that G Jesus cast out, for we are many, it says. I think only once he commanded, right? And they all left. So they can all leave at once. No, that's also in practical uh, deliverance ministry. I have heard that as well. That once you cast out demon of lust, next you cast out you know demon of fear. One by one, one by one, you you keep casting out. It happens this way also, that way also. So there's no formula for this. And uh, I want to tell us in the beginning we said everything is not demon possession, isn't it? So, sometimes when we have cast out a demon, the demon may leave, but psychologically that person can behave the same way. You know what I mean? It's not a demon anymore. It's a, it's a behavior of the person. So we should be able to distinguish between these things because they've learned something. It comes through like manifestation each time. You understood? So then you don't have to be casting it out because demon has gone, but this is the person. They need therapy. They need counseling. They may even need medication. Um, so I remember this one situation. It was a little scary. Uh, so uh, this particular individual uh, manifesting, okay, behaving weird, speaking weird things. Uh, and a couple of us actually uh, on our team, we were trying to help. We were trying to pray. I tried to minister deliverance. After everything, it's just getting worse. It's getting worse. We were getting updates from her colleagues that, uh, no, now she's saying this, she's saying that. But then thank God, you know, we have people like Jean on our team. So Jean helped us. She identified, no, it's, it's, a, it's a disorder. This child has a disorder. So we need to help. We need to help her. It's not about casting out a demon. Okay, so then thank God we found the right person. We had to take her to uh, uh, a therapist and medication and a person was under medication for some time. And once the medication uh, was administered, the, the mental condition was stable. So what is the meaning? They needed medication. You understood? So this is a mistake that a lot of us believers do. We think everything is demon. But maybe a person really needs help. They have some physiological issues that even after you cast it out repeatedly, if something is happening, be alert. Do they need help? Do they need medical help? It is a valid question. Sometimes when you help people medically, they improve. It's just a medical problem. You know what I mean? So there's nothing unchristian about helping people uh, with medication. Okay, so should not misunderstand as demon possession. Yeah, so that is also there, right? Ma'am, sometimes uh, when we go like for prayer, huh? sometimes we deal with curse. Curse, huh? So how can we? How? What is the proper way to deal with curse. those situation? Yes, curse. ma'am. Uh, because I know uh, in Uttarakhand, in fam one family is there. So we went there. So what is their uh, situation is whatever new thing they buy, they will get fire. They will burn itself. No one is doing anything, but uh, it will burn. Everything new thing they will buy. And in night, stones in their homes fall down like that type of situation. So uh, like my pastor told, it will be like curse. Shrap. So I want to ask, like, how can we deal with curse? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, there is one uh, Bible verse. Mm, yeah, it is Proverbs 26 and verse 2. It says, like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse does not come to rest. It simply means even if a curse is pronounced on somebody, there should be a reason 
for example they are unfaithful they are unrighteous they are doing some things and there is an open door if there is an open door the curse will be active but if there is no open door the curse will not work so when we read like numbers 23 23 i think it says like there is no witchcraft against jacob god's people even if somebody curses us it won't work one because we are in christ second there is no open door you are walking in righteousness so that is what this passage means it means there should be something for the curse to land on otherwise it will just not work now in this case maybe they were unbelievers or they are believers this family okay they were unbelievers correct so maybe their uh, worship has opened the door for what is going on in their life right so there must be some reason why this is happening how is uh how are the demons accessing how are the demons able to do this okay so again we have to go back to that same like pablo botari model um once you understand you lead them in a prayer of repentance i repent for not worshiping the true and living god i repent for uh, engaging in uh, uh, money in wrongful ways i repent there must be something no then you lead them in repentance and what are you doing that landing ground for the curse you're destroying it then how will it land it won't land after that you take authority on that curse you break it i break it whoever said it over you i break it in the name of jesus i command it to be destroyed you will no longer affect this family then it's fine because you've done everything now there's nothing where the demons can come and attach so they will walk in freedom now if they keep going back to those habits we can't help it now right so that's how it works curses okay so don't uh, i mean as believers we should not get very scared some when we go to pray for people they might say all this there is a big curse some big person has put a curse you think okay it's okay it doesn't matter satan was crushed on the cross through the cross whoever put the curse okay tell me what is it <laughs> i want to pray for you right because we have authority we should not get scared but yes approaching each person and ministering deliverance there is no formula you have to be alert with the holy spirit and you should be strong in your sense of authority faith prayerful life then we can we can deliver uh, minister yes vimal hmm Mm. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. So Vimal is asking. Uh, we pray for people who are op- who are affected by demons, um, and they are set free, but they go back. to their old ways what can we do about such people that's why in this model um uh, vimal we have you know talk to the person help them understand see this is happening because you are into all these things so then at least they will know that they should not go back to it but if they're going back to it and they're coming back saying problem has started again problem has started again then you just counsel them you tell them see i'll pray for you again we'll we'll uh, deal with this but please don't do this again right uh, god wants you to follow him walk with him so you need to instruct them from the word of god now after doing all this a couple of times they are still repeating you don't take per- i mean you don't put it on your blame yourself for it because you know we can't control people right we can only give them instructions and suggestions but it happens many times you feel sad that we have the answers in the word but people are still doing you know correct correct and we can't force we can't force okay so that's how it is okay good uh, i think an insightful uh, discussion many practical things we have learned um so praise god for that 
seems like i'll have to do one more class i was hoping today will be the last class but i have to do one more class which is fine mm. would it be okay if i do an online class next wednesday it's fine okay so we'll just do one online class and then we are through uh, with our portions so let's pray and close for now uh, could somebody please pray jesus uh, lord uh, we thank you for this time oh lord father that you have given oh lord father to uh, discuss and to learn oh lord father thank you for the new uh, insights that you have given us oh lord father thank you for lord of uh, the knowledge that you have uh, poured into us oh lord father jesus we ask for uh, the faith oh lord father help us oh lord father not to just listen but uh, to uh, take it and apply oh lord father in our lives lord jesus and help us oh lord father to grow more in your word oh lord father to see your power manifesting through us oh lord father god and jesus we thank you for this class oh lord father everything that we have learned oh lord father holy spirit god you be with us you guide us oh lord father to use it in the right thing that was needed oh lord father we give you all the glory and honor in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you thank you everyone Bye for now. We'll connect next Wednesday. Thank you.